So welcome everyone to night three. Thank you for joining me once again. I'm going to share my screen and pull up this IV therapy boot camp. Welcome to the mini edition. So just in case someone is new tonight, I want to say that we've had three nights of awesome commentary. And I also want to say again, thank you to all who have joined. And also that yes, this will be on my YouTube channel, The Concierge Nurse Network. You can subscribe there, but also connect with me, The Concierge Nurse Network on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And there's a The Concierge Nurse Network Facebook group. So it, whichever way, whatever is the way that you prefer your social media, but I will say that the best way to um, see re video replays anytime I do a webinar or masterclass from here forward is it will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. So um, I'm building that up and it's going well. It's a, um, I can't, I felt like I was late to the party, but <laughs> so if you're catching this on YouTube, hey, <laughs> because that's where it's headed to. So welcome to night three. I'm Dr. Ranika Stewart. I'm the founder of the Concierge Nurse Network and I'm the owner of Adaptive Wellness and Recovery in Tampa, Florida, but I'm really a Tennessean who relocated to Tampa in 2016. I relocated here. I was here for two weeks and I was fired from my job. And I only relocated here because of that job. So I was looking at moving to somewhere in Florida, Orlando, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, but Tampa was it because I got the job here. At the time, I was a some, somewhat of a new grad MP. I had about a, about a year of experience and I was super excited. I got a job at a federally qualified health center and one medical director hired me. I relocated. It took six months. So signed the contract. They knew it was going to be signed in December. They knew that I would not show up until June of 2016. So I got here in June of 2016, started my new job. And within two weeks, I was fired. So that was devastating. It was, it still, it still gives me a little... It, it was it was very hurtful. But with that said, I, like a lot of you, um, we all have our reasons for seeking out entrepreneurship, but the most important and biggest to me is definitely freedom. Owning my time is not just, it's not that I won't have to deal with um, patient care issues. It's not that it's not still frustrating to deal with a broken healthcare system, but I feel like my impact is greater and my ability to spend that time with patients or clients is what we call them on this side is greater. And I am super grateful for that. Um, I can work pretty much more efficiently and especially on a good day, I can make what I would have taken 10 hours to make in an hour. Okay. So <laughs> especially on a good day. So um, as I mentioned yesterday, I started in 2020, February, but let's say officially July of 2020, um, because the world closed down as soon as I registered my business. And it took until about a year to really get a good traction. And in July of 2021, that was the first month where I saw on my earnings reports that I had replaced my full time at the time that was about 110, 120,000 ish dollar a year MP job income. So I replaced it in July of 2021 and I had not worked nearly as hard. This was my full time for 40 hours a week, actually 50 to 60 because of all the charting and paperwork, but I had worked way less hours and was way feeling way better, way less strain on my body, way more time with my family. And I had made the same amount of money as I would make in my full-time job. So <laughs> with that said, I have been on a mission starting that year in November. That was the very first, first post-op recovery boot camp. I it wasn't that I had been a long-term business owner, but the reason boot camp came to be was because in my niche, which is post-op recovery, I was seeing so many other people starting these businesses, running successful businesses. I'm not a hater, but I thought in my head, like we as nurses, this is our area. This is a gap in care. This is an area that we are needed. This is a gap that we can close. This is a great opportunity for us. So the light bulb came on for me and there was no stopping me. I started teaching boot camp because I felt that nurses should be 
um, again, the leaders in post-op recovery and educating clients and being visible and helping to prevent complications and making an impact. And now I feel that way about pretty much all concierge nursing niches, including IV therapy. So that's how boot camp came to be. And I have had um, about what boot camp are we on? Number eight in February? Or is it nine? Something like that. It's been so many and it's been so fun that I have lost count. So that's a little bit about me and how all this came to be. In the meantime, with the very first boot camp was the official start of the Concierge Nurse Network. So that was when I officially started using and um, um, building the community and um, trying to have the visibility, the resources, and um, the support via the Concierge Nurse Network. And then from there, it started mainly with the Facebook group and the Facebook page. And now it's TikTok, it's Instagram, and of course, YouTube. So we are on night three of this agenda. We are doing marketing. And let me proclaim, just like I proclaimed on legal, I definitely am not a marketing expert. So when I'm talking about marketing, I'm definitely talking from my experience and what I've done that has worked. Um, there are definitely going to be some things that we do in business and in our marketing. There is some trial and error to this, and it definitely can be variable in your area and depending on, you know, so many things. Let me tell you from my background, I'm, I didn't have connections in Tampa that way. Remember I got here, I was fired from a job. So I don't really, I don't have family in Tampa. I didn't have a net friend, a network of friends in Tampa. Right. So I didn't have a, like that. Sometimes what you have when you're starting a business in your hometown. So don't let that stop you. If that is also the case for you, like I was new here. So um, not to mention, even if you have those connections and that, all, you know, the family and the friends, we all know that that does not automatically mean that they support you and your little business, you know, the little business <laughs> insult that you can get. And sometimes they just, it's not even that they don't want to support you. Sometimes they just truly don't understand. I know me and where I came from, it was kind of that, like, be happy with what you have. You are blessed. I am. But sometimes it was more like, you know, sit still, you don't have to keep wanting something else. So sometimes people just don't understand the what and the why of wanting to, um, you know, create your income and create more than one stream of income versus just kind of clocking in somewhere. There are some of us who come from families of entrepreneurs, and that is amazing, but I definitely did not. Um, and not a thing wrong with that, but I am the first in my family as far as like in my household, okay? So entrepreneurship where I'm from is rare. So as I said, even sometimes having family and friends around, it can be quite disappointing when it feels like they don't care or they don't support you. And sometimes they just don't understand or know how. So let's see. Yes, yes. Thank you. I I love sharing that story now. I used to not be, I was so embarrassed over getting to Tampa and losing my job for so long. What a relief it is to share a story, y'all. Like one thing I'll tell you right now in marketing it goes right into what we're doing tonight. Don't be afraid to share your story. When I tell y'all, I was so embarrassed by getting to Tampa and losing my job. I will be honest and say that my family, I'm going through these slides to tonight, wasn't necessarily wanting me to relocate. It was very hard. It was very emotional. So me doing that and kind of jumping off a cliff and and hoping it was successful, it almost felt like that they, it was like an I told you so moment when I got here and got fired. I was like, well, there's my family. They were right. They told me so, right? So it was not easy at all. But the thought of even talking about it out loud for at least a few years up until about a year ago was super painful. <laughs> so, but I will tell you, don't be afraid to share your story. Even in entrepreneurship, there are so many ups and downs. And one of the things that I strive to do is share those with you and be transparent. Because if you're wanting to get on this or join this journey, you're not going to feel motivated, inspired, and excited about it every single day. Because if there's ever been an emotional roller coaster that I've been on or a roller coaster of emotions, it's definitely entrepreneurship. And with all that said, I still choose it. You have to make that choice. And the first thing you have to do is make up your mind that you are in. So when I see nurses get frustrated or ready to give up because they ran into, you know, an issue with a regulation, I'm like, this is just the beginning. If that's going to break you, 
or make you, then, you know, th this is going to be, this may not be the road for you. It's okay to be frustrated. But remember I said on night one, we have a problem, <laughs> but what are the solutions? What can we do? How can we be the solution? When you focus on the fact that you have a solution and it is your duty and your job to be sure that you sh um, share that with people, then you kind of understand that one, you're not just selling things and two, that yes, you should be paid for your expertise and what you are offering, okay? So um, yeah, I probably could go on and on, right? <laughs> so so Sonia said, your job disappearing set you up for entrepreneurship, that's courage. And I, when I tell you terrified, 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 okay? Like that hurts so bad. And in stepping out into owning a business was, I honestly felt, I did feel pushed into it because I felt that the job market here, especially for nurse practitioners, is rough. And um, I just kept getting dead ends. And even sometimes when you get a good job as a nurse or a nurse practitioner, you always eventually you hit a wall I feel like you hit a ceiling there's no further advancement no further growth right with entrepreneurship you never stop yeah we can change jobs change professions but I'm telling you I've never had so much time and so much investment into me and my personal growth I've never had the means or even the availability for it up until I was owning or entrepreneur owning my own business I have been able to invest so much into myself, um, which is why you see me here today, because typically a webinar, a masterclass speaking, this was not something I ever imagined myself doing. So yes, invest in yourself, but even as you are investing in your business, continue to invest in yourself and your self-care and um, your mindset as well. Okay, so marketing starts with a plan, of course, and a budget. So at first, we all, let's be honest, we're starting at the beginning. We don't necessarily have a budget, but what I will say is just as you set aside, you know, for your attorney, for your tax professional, for your business set up expenses, supplies, you do need to plan for a marketing budget. You need to go the hardest and have the, one of the bigger budgets, you know, I, we, the kind of golden standard that we all kind of say is about a thousand a month. That doesn't always mean, um, that doesn't necessarily mean Facebook ads or Google ads. I will be honest with you and say that just taking a thousand dollars and throwing it into running an ad is going to be the biggest waste of your money. There are so many other things that you need to do that you should be doing to put that foundation in place. And, and, and you know why, right? If you've been here for three nights, you may remember me saying that everything from the foundation we talked about the first night to the legal foundation, but every part of these foundations, all the pillars, all these come together to, to equal one thing, you're building trust, okay? So let me tell y'all what I did. I started my business and I was excited and a marketing agency approached me and they was like, hey, we can run Facebook ads for you um, for $1,500 a month. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a lot. But I was like, okay, I have a thousand dollars a month budget. That's the recommended budget. Let's do it. So I was like, well, I can't quite do 1500, but you know, a thousand. So we did a thousand for like three months. Right. So they run the ads. Now that's not just the thousand for me paying them. I also have to pay for the actual ads. So now I'm like, well, all I really have to run ads for a month is 500, which is actually not too bad. It's low, but it's not bad, right? So they run the ads for me. And guess what happens? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing. Not one client from those ads. And I can't say that they weren't a good marketing company. I'm sure they were. So we sit down and we have our meeting and I'm just like, you know, frustrated. I feel like I just literally flushed that money down the toilet because I did. And the guy is like, well, you know, you know, you're really new and people just aren't familiar with your brand yet. And you don't really have any reviews or social proof. That's what the words he used. You need social proof. So in my head, I'm like, why wouldn't you tell me that at the beginning? You know, you think you're just going to walk in and start running some ads. And no, <laughs> it did not work at all. So guess what? Back to the drawing board. So when I'm talking marketing foundation tonight, I'm talking social proof. I'm talking 
What happens when a client lands on your page? Um, what is the feeling or the vibe? How will they feel when they interact with your social media, when they interact on your website? Is your website easy to use? Um, do they land on your page, whether whatever social media or website? Can they navigate it and do they know what to do next? That is so important. Is there a call to action on how to proceed to work with you, okay? So those are things that are part of your marketing foundation. So yeah, have a budget, but there are certain things that you should definitely be doing to set the scene, so to say, to set the stage, okay? And the first one that is on the list and it is super powerful is Google My Business. So let's go back to... The first night when we talked about having a virtual address and how important I said it was to have your virtual address in an office building that has a physical location, right? Now, if you're going to have space, you know, same, you want to have the most ideal space in an ideal part of town where you want to serve clients, right? Same with your virtual address. You really need to be strategic. Okay, so now it's time. You've done that foundation we talked about the first night. You have your name, you have your domain, you have secured social media pages. Now you want to go and set up your Google My Business page. It's super easy to do, but you do need to have your address already. So this is another reason to not use your home. You don't want to set up your Google My Business page until you have your address, okay? Your business, public facing corporate address, even if you're shipping supplies elsewhere. Remember, this is the one that puts you on the map because it really does. What happens is someone goes to Google and they say, IV therapy near me, and you will show up either on a list or on the map. So sometimes even if you don't have the visibility as far as showing up at the top of the results yet, when people click on a map, you can still show up on that map and they're just gonna look and see, okay, who's by me, who's the closest? But my first few clients, that was exactly how they found me. They were like, oh, Google, I pulled up this map and I saw you right here. And I was right here, like right within a few miles. So that was how they found me, okay? So you're going to put yourself on the map, <laughs> on the Google map, but on the map as in start having your internet presence. One of the biggest things for your credibility, remember he told me social proof. So if somebody Googled my business that they saw that ad and then they went to my social media, I have like five followers. And, and then if they go to, um, you know, Google, they're like, okay, does she even have a page? I did though. I did, I did do this early and I recommend the same for you. Um, does she have any reviews? Has anyone been to her? So that's what was meant by social proof, right? If they go to my website, you know, is it easy to make an appointment? But nonetheless, back to Google my business because I can go on some tangents, right? On Google My Business, you go there and you set up your business, you put your address in. What Google does is they, they can do this electronically now, but they have options for how to verify that you are in fact in that location. Now, when I did it, the way they verified me was by sending me a postcard with some numbers on it. And then I, when a postcard came, I had to put those numbers in and that made my profile active. My understanding is they might do something a little different these days, but nonetheless, they do want to verify that your business truly exists and you're the owner. So we went through that process. Now I have a Google My Business page. Great. One of the first things you need to do with your Google My Business page is add some pictures. It could be pictures of your products. It could be pictures of you. I know so many people are like, I don't want to show my face. You, hopefully you can get past that. I had to, I had to. But nonetheless, you want to do everything you can to establish that internet presence and build trust, okay? So that may include some pictures of you or an about me, who owns the business, uh, information about products, okay? But one of the next best things you can do after you have put yourself on the map and you have a Google My Business presence is start to get reviews ASAP, as fast as you can. So how the heck do you get reviews and you haven't had one client? Well, <laughs> Some people will say, just go to Instagram or they'll go and like ask some friends and that's fine. But what I, I, you want to be authentic, Google and their AI can definitely see through and read through things that are not authentic. So what you really want to do, um, one is just be sure that you're asking someone who um, they may not necessarily have used a service from you yet, but they could comment on the type of practitioner or professional you are. So that's not dishonest, right? Um, two, you could um, provide a like a um, preview, you know, like have an open house or a preview, so to say, of your products and services 
and allows a couple of people to try that either discounted or even free in exchange for them sharing their experience. So you don't want to be like, I'm paying you for the review. No, no. Try this out. Go through this experience with me and then share your experience. So you want to really focus on and prioritize getting those reviews started. But guess what? It doesn't end there. Because even after you start your Google My Business and you start to get those reviews, guess what? Ongoing, that is going to be so important. It is so funny to me how every time I get a review on my page, within those days or um, or that week after, I always get more clients finding me on Google. I get more phone calls. I get more inquiries. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's like Google's being kind to me because someone left a review. So what needs to happen with Google My Review, Google My Business and your reviews is you need to be getting reviews at least, you know, monthly, but you need to be getting them, you know, regularly and Google definitely can see through 10 reviews coming in. So you again, you you want it to be authentic. Um you want to have a system in place. So for example, if you use a system that um, I use Acuity. Acuity allows me to set an email that automatically goes to clients within 24 hours after their visit. And it says, how was your visit? You know, thank you so much. Whatever, whatever, please share your experience, et cetera, et cetera, right? And it gives them the direct link. So you always want to make it easy for people to find you, <laughs> right? Um, make it easy for them to schedule with you and make it easy for them to pay you. And then make it easy for them to review you. So I don't want them to have to find how to review or how do they get to my page. You can actually also have a, um, a, a QRS, I mean, wait, QR code, not QRS, a QR code. I'm thinking of um, of EKGs, y'all. Heck. But anyway, you, you can have a um, code that they can scan in your clinic. I've read mixed reviews on that because if they're on your Wi-Fi and in your clinic, sometimes Google can see that review is not being authentic. So, but, so I like to send it out in the email and it's something they do, but I have definitely shamelessly said, if they told me they love their um, experience while they're in my presence. And I'm like, do you mind just doing a quick review? Because those are so valuable. Um, they're gold. Okay. They're gold. So B, don't be afraid to ask for them. People, sometimes they'll want to tip, they'll want to do so many things. And I'm just like, you know, what would really be awesome and really appreciate it is a review. That is, th that is your start. That is the start of your social proof. That is your social proof, right? Um, and it builds trust. Okay. Every, how many of us order stuff? And the first thing we do, I know I do it, is look at the reviews. And I'm talking like I'll read about 50 to 100 of them sometimes. <laughs> like I, when I'm researching, I'm researching. So other people's opinions, you can always say how great you are because you are. But when someone else says it, it's definitely the social proof. And I mean, it's just, that's the way the world is. We need that social proof. If you can get video reviews, even better. Um, I've seen some nurses do really well at getting video reviews and reviews from people while they're in their clinic. If you can have, I've seen people use like wood, like etched wood, like little signs or things that they can hold, like hashtag dripped or hashtag your business name, things like that. And those pictures starting to circulate will bring like, who, what is that? What did they do? Oh, they did a drip. Where did they do that at? <laughs> you know? Um, and then they go Google and then they find you and then they read some reviews. So again, you're building trust. Um, it's great to have a marketing budget. You may use that for events. You may use that for your flyers. You may use that um, to set up, you know, at a expo. So, you know, a lot of these places have charges to them. But what about the free organic things that you can do? It's important to do those because we, yeah, we can buy attention, but organic goes a long way and gives you more staying power. And again, it builds trust. So Google My Business is just top of the list for setting the foundation of your marketing. So let's see. Um, Tiffany says, is there a hack to add biz pictures? You know what? It's been really weird lately with that. No, I used to just go. So you can go to your Google My Business profile and do little updates. So typically you can add a picture of your business and your about, but you can also just go kind of like you do on social media and post a picture and a caption. Um, but I feel like lately Google has been giving me trouble with that. Um, I tried to upload a few things, but some of it is um think like if it the therapies we offer, think IV. 
red light. Some of the therapies, most of them, weight loss. A lot of those, um, they have policies on advertising those types of services. So that could be the issue um, with that, Tiffany, unfortunately. So I, what I've been working on, I haven't sat down and did it again. It's just trying to keep it really vague and kind of avoid some of the things that may be against their policies, which is a lot of things, especially that we do, right? So kind of just keep it vague and kind of, I'd like to use generic terms like wellness, weight support. Honestly, at this point, I don't even use weight in anything because it just automatically flags algorithms, whether it's Google, Facebook, Instagram. Um, so I typically kind of go more for wellness. Um, your hashtags and keywords are important. So when you think of a keyword, um, research, like in your city, what are keywords that are going to be related to the service you're providing and keywords that are related to your city? So in Tampa, I do post-op care and I do IV therapy. So a keyword may be Tampa wellness, Tampa clinic, Tampa moms, <laughs> right? Um, um, Tampa nurse, Tampa post-op care, Tampa uh, wellness and recovery. So think keywords, right? Those are, I say, kind of think of them as if I was going to go search for this service in my city, how would I search it? And there's different variations. There's a shorter, like a couple of words, but there's also longer phrases that people may search. So you can actually research. What I've noticed is if I search something like Tampa IV therapy, if you scroll down a little bit on Google, they'll, they'll tell you people also search for. So that's good intelligence. <laughs> um, that can tell you some other things that people are searching for. Now, at one point I did, after well established in my business, a few years in, I, a couple, I should say, I started running Google ads and I had someone set them up. If you setting up Google ads on your own can also be flushing money down the toilet. Um, they have, oh, I forget the name of what those ads are, but smart campaigns. It's like flushing money down the toilet. Okay. Honestly, when you get to the point of ads, I do recommend an agency. But remember I said, there are certain things that you need to have in place first. This agency is not gonna work magic with no social proof, no reviews, no internet or social media presence, okay? So you need to have these things in place first. Now, as you go, word of mouth is always going to be one of the best things ever. It's free. You can offer, um, you know, credits. I don't pay cash, obviously, but you could offer credits to clients for referring other clients. Um, you can offer credits or upgrades or up, um, bonuses for the time spent leaving a review. You can't really say you're paying them for a review. So yes, having incentives and the what's in it for me for your clients is definitely going to be a good thing. You do want to have that in place. And once you are ready and you've built more of this foundation and done some of these organic things, and then you want to go and hire someone to help with your Google My Business or your Google Ads or your Facebook Ads, then, you know, it makes more sense at that point. But just starting out and just thinking you're going to throw money at um, and buy that attention and buy that trust, no, you really do have to build it, okay? And then you buy to boost your visibility. Let's see. Let's see there. Yeah, I use Fiverr, Fiverr for, I've used Fiverr to hire someone. Does Google post a list? No, but you probably can Google it. <laughs> And that, of course, is even with like Facebook, Instagram, all of these platforms have certain words that they um, ban or shadow ban, um, certain hashtags on Instagram. It's like, do not use them ever. Your content will not show to anyone. So, but you definitely, of course, that can change from day to day, month to month. So it probably is ideal to Google those and just be sure. But yeah, they definitely have a list and certain services they will um like you know not allow you to post about or run ads to like i i've run into it with weight loss i've run into it with red light therapy and i've run into it with semaglutide what else um oh it's something else hormones i've run into it with hormone replacement so i really do have to focus on these organic things and building trust and being visible more so because like i said a lot of what i do i can't just go buy um, by trust or by um, that visibility because you know a lot of this is um it's, it can be censored at times so just be aware of that let's talk about so business cards of course that's an obvious but I'll tell y'all what I do I don't even do business cards so much anymore I actually do more of um, rat cards rat cards being like the longer rectangular shaped I'd usually do like a gloss front 
um, those seem to be, I like them because people can't just kind of fold them up or toss them like they do a business card. Rat cards are like, it's hard to just tuck it somewhere and forget it harder, I should say. But I actually also like them because a lot of the times I leave my rat cards in places where I know my target client may see them. So for example, for post-op, I leave my rat cards. Um, if a doctor's office will allow, I love for them to be right in the front. So I've had a few that will do that, but I also have left them at places, for example, post-op clients have to wear compression garments. So I've left my rat cards in the store where they buy their compression garments, but I also buy rat card holders. So I buy the holders and the rat cards. I just ordered another thousand because it's time for my Christmas campaigns, y'all. But anyway, um, and I hope I run out and I'm going to order another thousand. I need to give out about 2000 between now and the first of the year, but I really prefer rat cards. Um, you can do brochures. You can do regular business cards. They all have their places and uses. But as of the last, all of this year, I have really just focused on rat cards. I just made something short and sweet that just conveys the message I want to convey um, and tells people, guess what? How to reach me, how to visit our website. Um, and then of course, if they go to the website, uh, I have more information there is also how to schedule a consultation or an IV appointment. So I try to make it everything interact, everything um, more automated, right? And um, people don't get lost of like, well, how the heck do I do this? Or where do I go to schedule an appointment? If you, As y'all know, most of us, if we can't figure out exactly what we're supposed to do next, we're probably just gonna navigate away from that website and go to one that tells us. So that is important. So let's talk about partnerships. Let's see, some lady gave her business card and it's actually just a card you scan with your phone and then it pops up. I have seen a few of those. So yes, you can go to a site. She's, this one is called P-O-P-L, but there are um, sites where you can just have a digital, that's what it's called, a digital business card. Those are nice too. The One of the reasons that I don't, of course, doing a digital, I do the rat card rather than printing business cards because it's longer. And the way I create the rec card, like mine has a picture of a beach on the front. So the way I created the rec card, it just kind of gets attention. Hold on, let me see if I can navigate to show y'all. But I'm really, I make a lot of the things that I do, another marketing foundation, <laughs> know how to use Canva. A lot of the things that I do are done in Canva. So I went over here to, y'all can see this, right? a website called Vistaprint, right? And let me see, here's what, see? Yeah, look, I got all kinds of projects, but these are my rat cards right here. So I use these rather than, because I've done business cards, but see how, so when I print these out, they're glossy, they stand out. Like I, there's a doctor's office that has these on display and they have posted pictures on Instagram of their lobby and I could spot my rat card. Like I'm zooming in and I'm like, yep, there's my rat card right there in their lobby, right? So, but I like for, and, and I have had tried all different variations, but this one was kind of the one I ended up with just because um, the neutral colors, the calming colors, blues. Do y'all know the psychology of colors? Um, blues are besides being calming, but they're also um, help build trust. So a lot of us that besides the water, because we do IV therapy or, or because I offer a relaxing service, blue is also a, a color that helps build trust. Did y'all know that like red and yellows are associated with people feeling hungrier? That's why you see some fast food places or restaurants use red and yellow, like McDonald's, for example. So there is a, a psychology to colors. Oh, dot card for the digital. Yeah, those are great. And those are great when you're out in an event or you go to somewhere and somebody's like, hey, how do I look you up? But also another great thing to do for your business. So that's Vistaprint. Etsy has, I know, who else is an Etsy addict? I love Etsy. Let me see. Etsy has business sign, like QR business sign, I think is what, so the, look at these, amazing. So you can do things like this too, especially good to get table toppers for your event. Look at this one, they made a review one. That one's, you know, they can just scan and do a review. So that's another um, option. Etsy has all kinds of creative things, but I do love like these 
where you can put all your, even for payment, if you're out doing an event and you want someone to be able to pay you via Zelle, because I have a business Zelle, you can QR code that. Venmo, y'all see that? <laughs> so um, that's another option. But I say have a, multiples, have some digital business cards, have the QR codes to send people to different aspects of your business. And then also have the rat cards, which I have just, just kind of like what I always order now. And I like them sitting in doctor's offices because they do catch attention. Yeah, Etsy's awesome. So back to here. So let's talk about partnerships. One of the biggest questions I get when people start to um, kind of go out and market is they'll visit a hair salon or they'll visit a day spa. You know, they visit other businesses that are complementary to theirs, right? And they'll say, well, they want to do a event or they want to do a partnership, but they want me to pay them for clients. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is to say that, that it's a no, okay? That's a no. So yeah, yes, you could go and you could partner. Um, I had a esthetician that I added to my business and she said to me like, Hey, um, you know, I can send you clients, but, um, can you, you know, pay a referral? And the answer is no. I said, I'm a medical provider. I provide medical services and it's not legal for me to pay you to send me clients. That is a complete conflict of interest and it's not legal. So there's all different laws about kickbacks and, um, Stark laws. I know y'all have heard of this stuff. I won't like get into it, but I don't pay anyone to refer someone to me. Um, remember I said earlier, if you have a client, you could give them a credit to their account. That's different just as a thank you. Those are, those are legal, but I'm talking other business owners or say I go to the surgery center because I do post-op care. I think I saw someone ask me that. Um, do I pay them to send me clients? No, <laughs> I don't pay them. Um, in turn, I don't collect any money from them if I were to refer a client to them. That's it's either we're going to have that collaborative relationship or we're not, right? But we're not going to do illegal. But yes, you can partner with them. You can do an event. Um, you can, it could be a mutually beneficial situation because, you know, at first you may be getting more clients out of it, but eventually you may also just cross refer. And that's honestly how you have to represent it. If they're just insistent on money, and I've run into this on myself, if they're insistent at minimum, then say, hey, I want to show up. I want to share my services with your clients. Can I pay to rent that space for the day? That's perfectly legal. But you can't take an IV therapy service and say, for every drip that I do, I'm going to pay you this much for sending me that client. But can you say, yeah, um, you, you know, you refer 10 clients to me and I'm going to come do those drips and I'm going to pay this much for the space for the day. Yes, you can do that. But I tell people why it gets frustrating because I get like you're using their space and you're getting access to their clients. But on the flip side, so many people are always out to profit off of us, even in entrepreneurship, even in owning our businesses. It's just so many people that are already just waiting like wolves in sheep's clothing. And remember, this is your license. This is a medical procedure. There's overhead, there's insurance. You have a collaborative doc to pay for. Um, your average profit on an IV drip is probably somewhere around 100 to maybe 150, right? Let's just say. And now you also have to pay a percentage. <laughs> so I don't recommend that model. I don't even if someone catches a replay, I don't recommend that. But yes, paying for the space or paying for access as far as being in that location and having access to those clients, that's fair, okay? But I wouldn't do an agreement where every time they send me a client, I have to pay this percentage, okay? I would avoid those kind of scenarios. But as far as talking to people, <laughs> Tara said, I get scared to talk to people. I get scared to talk to people still, okay? Like in my real life, I'm very quiet. Um, I have to kind of go into this different mode. It's a different mode you go into with business ownership. And that mode is the mode that I have to go into is this is amazing. This is helpful. This is beneficial. And I need to let people know it exists. So that helps me whether I'm talking to the doctor's office about what we offer for post-op care or whether I'm talking to a client on why IV therapy could really be beneficial to them. I 
I'm super passionate about it. I know that this is helpful. I know that it's beneficial and I need to convey that. So the best thing to do is practice it. I know y'all have heard of an elevator pitch. Make that a part of your marketing foundation. Be able to say who you are, what you offer and how it benefits who you're talking to. So if it's a client, what are the benefits? If it's a, a, if you're going to a gym and you're wanting them to tell their members about your services, how does it benefit athletes and athletic recovery? How does it benefit recovery from a workout? How does it benefit them as far as fueling their workout? So who you are, what you offer and how it benefits whoever your audience is at that moment. So really be able to sit down, um, outline this and practice it. The best thing you can do when you feel scared, anxious, or unsure about something is to do it anyway and keep doing it. So y'all know how I got more comfortable with what I'm doing right now because I was one of those people that even in college when I took speech and we had to get up and do our speeches, I would just get sick, break out in the sweat, like feel like I want to vomit, okay? But when I started a business, I quickly realized that 99.999% of this part of business is also network, building a network, building a community, building resources for the clients you serve and talking to people and making them aware. And networking, I hated it. Everybody would say, you have to network to get jobs. And I'm like, I am a nurse and I have this degree and I have this license. Why do I have to network? I should be able to fill out that application. But you really do. You really do have to network. You really do have to be visible. And one of the best things you can do is that be okay with being seen, be okay with being visible and really be um, adamant about the fact that what you offer can change lives, that you do have an impact to make. And that is how I get past the, oh my gosh, do I really have to talk to people? That's how I do the webinar the last three nights. And then I'm posting it on YouTube is because this is important and this message needs to be out there. I want this information out there, right? So again, the more scared you are, do it. But the way I did it, by the way, was Clubhouse. <laughs> Y'all remember Clubhouse? I used to go on Clubhouse to listen. It was always juicy. Remember, we were kind of like still in shutdown mode. So Clubhouse was like super fun. But then I, one day I was like, I had a question and I got, and I went up on the stage um, and they were like, okay, well, tell us who you are and where you're from and whatever, whatever. And then I was like, I started to do that. I, I felt like I was stuttering and I was still breaking out in a sweat, but I didn't have the pressure of a camera in my face. So I was able to do it. And then I realized, like, keep doing it. So I started going into rooms and going up on the stage, so to say, because in Clubhouse, you have a stage, right? And um, talking. And I did it. The more I just kept doing it. Another thing I started doing, I started hitting that live button on social media. I was like, forget it. Just hit it and start talking. <laughs> um, of course, I do have a little more of a strategy now. I'll kind of outline. But sometimes I just hit the button and just introduce myself, talk about a service, talk about something coming up. I know the first time or two that I hit the live button, I may have been live for two or three minutes and I just felt like I broke out in the biggest sweat and my face turned red and I just couldn't wait to end the live. And then I would just delete them. I wouldn't even keep them up. If y'all go to my Instagram now, you see that I keep a lot of my lives up. <laughs> even though what I tell myself before I start is like, I ain't gonna keep this live up. Let me just go on here. But I've ended up keeping them up. So be strategic in your partnerships. You want to work, look for, so think of your target client. This is where you turn into a stalker. You want to know who your target client is. You have to have a target client. You can't say that everyone is your client, okay? So another part of your marketing foundation is having a niche and knowing that you have a very certain client you're looking for. I thought my target client was anyone having surgery, but really it's not. I even at one point thought my target client was anyone having cosmetic surgery. No, it's not. And then uh, the other flip side of that for IV therapy, my target client was anyone. Everyone needs an IV drip, right? But honestly, it's not. My target client is mostly women, okay? Between about the ages of 30 to 55-ish, mostly 35 to 45, right? And a lot of them, their kids are adults, they're kind of at a turning point in life where they want to do a mommy makeover or they want to really focus more on their health and wellness. Their kids are out the house a lot of the time. I always think in my head that I've noticed my target client is a lot like me, but not just that, they're researchers. I'm a researcher. They're discerning. I'm discerning. Uh, I'm not going to just go anywhere for a drip. 
So they're going to research. They're going to pay attention to my reviews. They're going to pay attention to my experience. They're going to look at my Google My Business page and um, read those. They're going to look at those pictures and say, oh, I like this clinic. <laughs> they're a researcher just like me. So I've noticed that I don't get the clients that just kind of, I, every now and then, just kind of blow in with the wind. I get clients who have really taken the time and researched and really determined um, that I was the ideal person or business for them, okay? So your target client could very well be like you, but the most important thing is to know who they are. With that said, what is my target client like? Where do they hang out at? What other places or professionals will they encounter? Those are the professionals you build relationships with. And, and you don't build one-sided relationships. I always offer, you know, here's some of my cards and I'll take some of theirs. You want that you're building a community, right? You're building a community. You Part of what you're doing besides just offering your service is also if a client doesn't need something from you or say that you're a client, but they have something else that they need assistance with, hey, I know so and so they would be able to help you with this problem, right? So you you want to be you want to build resources and not just offer a service. These are the kind of things that set you apart because we all know that there's drip lounges everywhere at this point. So what is going to make you or your experience different? And the more niche you can be, the better. If I, I learned that. I tried to focus on everybody and everything, but now knowing this is who I'm looking for, this is who I truly enjoy. It, it helps me in my marketing message and how I talk about my services, okay? How I talk about what I offer and what I have learned besides strategic partnerships, networking, being visible. One of the best things you can do is be willing to provide education. Guess what I'm doing for the last three nights? Being willing to provide education. It is no different in your IV therapy business. One of the best things you can do when it comes to your social media accounts, let's skip down to website, social media accounts. One of the best things you can do is have an FAQ section. Really take that time to show your expertise, show that you know what you're offering and you know what your clients will need to know or may want to know before they proceed, right? So FAQs on your website are super important, but also take those same FAQs. You could turn them into a quick video. FAQ, how do I book my IV drip? Make a video. This is how you book your IV drip, right? This is who I am. This is what we offer. These are the benefits. And this is how you schedule. Like you, you can never run out of content. If you, when you start seeing clients and they're asking certain questions, how often should I drip? What's in my drip? How does this vitamin affect this? How does this help that? That is all education and content that you can take and provide. So you can provide it different ways. One way is blogging or what we call, um, yeah, blogging or vlogging. So you can do it as a written written blog where you answer an FAQ, put those on your website, add blogs to your website, or you could do it as a video where you do just like I'm doing now. You answer a question and you post it in multiple places. So you would post it on TikTok, for example, post it on Instagram. Excuse me, I will say for the most part, a lot of clients lately, they come from Google search, right? For IV therapy, we're talking. And they come from um, TikTok of all places. Yeah, I did not want to do TikTok. I, Facebook, Instagram, I've been at it for years. I was just not doing another social media platform. And here I am. Now I'm TikTok and YouTube. But what I've learned is you can take content education, whether it's written or whether it's video, and you can repurpose it across different social media platforms, okay? But I will tell you now that most of the social media platforms are prioritizing video. So that is important. It doesn't always have to include your face, but they are prioritizing that. But if you like to write, taking the time to write a blog based on an FAQ, based on an ingredient that you offer, based on what is the experience like in your clinic, creating videos or written and adding those to your website does help for your website to um, show up higher in the search rankings. So I won't get too complicated, but that is something called SEO or search engine optimization. And having that, um, optimizing your website, the person who builds it for you, they should understand SEO. They should understand how to include keywords into your website. So for example, for example, Tampa IV therapy, those are in my website because what happens is I want Google to know those are there and they do because 
Google and their AI, it reads your website, right? And so when someone searches, is my website going to show up? So that takes time, okay? SEO is a long game, just like entrepreneurship. But so we're talking short game, visibility, networking, providing education on social media, posting, introducing yourself. And then you have the longer game of SEO, building keywords into your website, writing blogs and creating content, updating your Google My Business page, um, showing up in other people's platforms. So you could be doing speaking engagements or providing a community education event, for example, right? Um, but even if you have mom's groups or like a podcast that's local to your area, getting an interview with the media, these things are great for SEO, <laughs> right? So don't think small at all. Think all the way to the top. And yes, could you have billboards? Yes, but that's going to be a probably later and probably something later down the road. So again, yeah, you could jump to a radio ad. You could jump to a, a agency running ads for you. But there's so many other things that you can do to build organic presence and also trust. Let me see what questions are popping up. Let's see. Oh, no, don't leave us. But hey, catch the recording, okay? Who would I recommend to build a website? That I haven't had, I've had a website so long. So it depends. It, do you want like a basic starter? Or are you talking like optimize SEO um, keywords? <laughs> because that, that I have a lady that maintains mine and I can send her information. Let me make a note. I can post it in my email, but I have something called WordPress, which also allows for you to add blogs. It's supposed to be, I've heard like the top choice for building your website, WordPress. So yeah, but something basic like Wix or GoDaddy, there's not a thing wrong with that either. You know what frustrated me was the thousands that I spent on my website, it was a couple of thousand. And then like people would call me because they would just go to Google search and they would find me, amen to that. And then they would call and ask me every question that was already answered on my website. That used to drive, I was like, well, I spent thousands on this website. So don't, <laughs> so that's why I say, yeah, you want the bells and whistles, but it's okay to take time to get to that. So don't fret if you can't do the bells and whistles, because just like I'm talking about, there's so many other things you can do. Okay. But all the bells and whistles, I have a lady that I use. Her name is Jennifer. And she um, designs, and then she also does my maintenance because WordPress can be a little complicated. So there are certain things that have to be done regularly. And one time my whole website crashed and thank God I had a website maintenance person because yeah. So yeah, I can share my person who does my website. And yeah, your website builder should know how to optimize it for Google and for search. Let's see. She, so my website was built by another designer. It's actually on there. It's at the bottom of my website, actually still on the footer. So she put her info on adaptivebonus.com. The person who built my website, if you scroll to the bottom, she's on there. But I have a different person who now builds and she also um, does maintenance. But website is a very important part. And as I said, you can't just do your website and forget it. You need to update your website. You need to add blogs. You need to add content to your website too. And that's one of the best ways is just to have a blog. So let me tell you, I'm guilty of having maybe one blog article on my website, but that's something that I'm actually going to change. Um, even if you do something monthly, based again on the FAQ, based on providing some sort of education, I say do a blog and then again, take that same content and turn it into little short video clips that you could put on your social media as well. Let's talk about a little bit about social media. So let's talk Instagram and TikTok. Those are my favorite two right now. TikTok being kind of more towards the top these days. But the reason I say that my favorite two is because whatever I post on Instagram or TikTok video, they're, they're both something called short form content, right? Usually about a minute or less on average. Um, you can interchange them. So that's why I like them. But when you post on these sites, one of the best things you can do is use keywords. But on those sites, they're not called keywords. They're called hashtags. But all the hashtag is, is a keyword. So Google, not Google, I'm sorry. TikTok is a search engine. 
um, Instagram. It's not as TikTok is almost bigger. It's getting to be as much as big as Google as far as the search engine. Instagram saying they can say I use hashtag Tampa post op nurse. If someone goes to Instagram and they say I need a post op nurse in Tampa, and they type Tampa post op nurse, my Instagram will pop up for them. Okay, or if they type Tampa private nurse, my Instagram will still pop up for them based on the hashtags that I use. If someone is looking for a Tampa IV drip. So that's the point of hashtags. Think of hashtags even as keywords, but you just use a hashtag in front of them. Let's see. Okay. Yes. I will share my web person, but social media is not any longer fun when you're a business owner. It is a strategy involved. The, I won't even talk algorithms because I told you that video is prioritized. So definitely be okay with making some short videos to provide education, show behind the scenes of your day, um, show what an experience may look like, you know, clients getting a drip with you. All of it is called content. I film and video constantly throughout the day. Sometimes those videos just sit in my phone and then I'll sit down and say, let me make a, I want to show what it's like for this to happen. You know, what is it like to come in and get this service done with me? And then I'll create a video based on footage in my phone. So social media for business, you have to be strategic and keep in mind that social media for business is not a matter of like, oh, I posted my puppy and everybody liked it. That's not what we're doing here. We're posting for visibility. We're posting to build trust and we're posting for social proof, right? So I like to show that I actually do post-op care because yes, I provide mentorship for post-op care and IV therapy. So yeah, I show me in action. I show me out. I show behind the scenes, right? So same here, show yourself providing a service or preparing for the day or packing your mobile IV bag, right? All of those things people like to see. People like to really see you and get to know you and get a feel for you. You attract your ideal client most of the time because of social media. So they're not necessarily going to like, they're not necessarily going to comment. So those are called vanity metrics. Get past the vanity metrics that we're used to with social media. Social media is no longer about like the cute pictures or the curated news feed or the making everything look a certain way. Social media has gone back to like the more authentic, more about relationships, more about building trust, right? So that's how you have to look at it and think of when you're using social media for your business, okay? You might post something and it, my TikTok only has 65, I think the last I looked, followers from Adaptive Wellness. That's it. And so many clients in the last couple of weeks have said they found me on TikTok, by the way. So with that said, keep in mind that it doesn't matter. Again, some of those things are vanity. I do know of businesses that go buy followers because they feel like it makes them look more legitimate. I built my Instagram and it's since 2020 at 2000 something followers, but it's not fake followers. It's real. Um, I just believe in things being authentic and real and the same with social media. So I don't recommend just going and buying followers so it can look. I recommend actually posting, um, providing valuable information, um, valuable content, building trust, and it will organically build, okay? And also interacting with other businesses. I interact with potential clients on social media. I interact on, say, you know, news pages in my area, surgeons pages in my area. So social media is meant to be a two-way communication. So also consider that you need to interact on social media and not just post and ghost, <laughs> okay? So social media can feel like a full-time job, but again, focus on education, focus on visibility, focus on building trust and focus on the fact that, again, you have an amazing service, you have a amazing knowledge, you have amazing expertise, and you need to be sure that people are aware of it. Looking at it that way makes things a lot easier versus kind of focused on like how many likes you got or having this perfectly, again, curated um, feed, okay? So I mentioned Canva. You, I recommend setting up a Canva Pro account and getting to know Canva. It's In the end, it's easy to use, but if you're kind of stuck and you're like, how the heck do I begin to use Canva? 
Etsy has templates too for IV therapy, for menus for IV therapy. They have templates for like posts for IV therapy. So that would be a good start. The downside of it is when you get those templates, social media doesn't, again, they don't prioritize still photos anymore. You can't just post flyers and still photos. So like, like meaning like no video or no animation. Um, they really prefer video. So you could use those but you really want to mix in some video. You want to vary your content, okay? Video, education, some entertainment, some behind the scenes, introducing yourself, um, talking about, you know, um, like me. I, I have told this story a few times now, now that I can talk about it without crying, about losing my job when I relocated to Tampa. And someone said immediately, like, thanks for sharing your story, because we love, I love other people's stories. We love people's stories. So one of the best things you can do is start your social media page and kind of start telling a story. Take people and your clients on a journey with you. You're starting your business. This is so exciting. Look what I offer. Look what we're adding. Keep keep that, keep that going. <laughs> Take them on that journey. People enjoy that. And again, it truly does go a long way in building trust. Let's see, what is the average cost of having someone manage your social media? So I've been there and done that. And let me tell y'all why I wasn't super fond of it. And I'm not, there are good social media managers. I've had a few. My average cost was somewhere around 500 a month. Typically that was like three to four posts a week, but I didn't like it because they would only just post flyers and I need my content to be varied, right? So that was an issue, exactly what I just mentioned. But another thing that I ran into um, was how they posted. So when they post for me, it didn't sound like me. It wasn't the way I talk. It wasn't the way I speak with my client. So if you're going to hire a manager, these are things you really have to talk to them about. You really have to be able to convey what you want. And I did that. I tried to hire them a little earlier, just like with the marketing company. I'm like, hey, let me get a social media manager. But I'm still myself really nailing down and honing in on my target client. I'm still honing in on how I need to talk to them. I'm still honing in on something called my brand voice and how in the mood that I convey. So when I tried to hire that social media manager too quickly, they didn't, I'm still getting a grasp on that. And thus they couldn't grasp it, right? So it is important to now, if it's someone that could possibly follow you around and really just, which is not realistic, right? But it would be nice. I, if I could hire one that could just follow me around and really get a feel for me and what I do all day, every day, I feel like they could better manage my social media and get the point across. <laughs> but that was the challenge that I ran into was just more of the brand voice. For example, one of my social media managers would comment because part of what a social media manager does is interact. They go to other pages. They go to put your potential target clients. They use hashtags and they interact via those hashtags. So if your hashtag is hashtag, whatever your city is in wellness, they're going to that hashtag and look at other pages or people who have those hashtags and interact, right? But they would interact on my page and it would sound nothing like me. Like they would make comments like, oh girl, I love that dress you know, or, oh girl, you so like weird stuff. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like me. I don't talk like that. Like, stop it. So <laughs> it was just super awkward. So I have kind of run into that with social media managers and I still would recommend them, but there's so many things I say, again, this is that foundation thing. You want to be honed in on your target client. You want to know who you're talking to. You want to know what they enjoy, how to speak to them what is going to get their attention, right? Because you need to learn that before you can truly really convey that or have a marketing agency who is not you convey that message that is yours. So, so far, what I'm finding is that me sharing my own story, me providing my own education, that's working out better for me than just paying somebody to try to guess, right? But so far, but I tried it. I've, I've had about two or three. I've had virtual assistants that tried to do social media for me. Now I just don't let anyone near it. I just do it myself. Um, algorithms have truly changed. Instagram used to be more about how many times you post, which hashtags you use. Now Instagram is more about do people interact with your content and does it provide value? Does it, does it prompt interaction? So social media algorithms change all the time, right? 
Um, so I have found that just kind of simplifying things, right? And really just focusing on building trust has really been helpful to me. Okay. I hate that it's storming. I wish it was storm here. It's been kind of kind of dry. Let's see. <laughs> Jamie says she needs a TikTok tutorial. I needed a TikTok tutorial. I'm still, I've gotten better about creating videos, but most of the time I find a catchy sound and then I use that and just put a video to it. <laughs> but that's not the best strategy for TikTok. So I'm going to tell you what I'm about to start doing more of. And that's more of a day in my life behind the scenes. Go with me while I, and I have a couple on my pages. Go with me while I get a post-op client settled in. That video has done better than almost anything else I posted. So people are over the social media, plastic, fake, superficial. People really like to see you and what you offer and learn. People love to learn. People go to TikTok and legitimately search for education. Okay. I learned that from clients. One of my clients is a tax professional. She found me on TikTok and she said to me, um, she's a post-op. She said to me, honestly, I went to your page. I saw some videos. I saw you. I saw things that you were um, educating about and you were my people because she also does the same on her social media. So immediately I was her person just because she could see who I was. She could, it, I built the trust. Okay. I built the trust. Um, so again, focus on that and that will simplify your life. So don't overthink social media or TikTok even. You don't have to dance on there, I learned. I just thought everybody was dancing. So that's what you had to do. And I was like zero interested in dancing on TikTok. Now I do love to dance, but I was just not interested in dancing on TikTok, okay? So I kind of thought TikTok would just kind of go away, but then it didn't. And now it's one of the hugest search engines and people do go. And that's what she told me. She went and searched. And she said she actually had been searching for a couple of months. And then finally she found my page and she was like, I wish I had found you I had drains I needed taken out you know she wanted a drip so people are going to be looking for you so will you be found that's marketing are people going to find you let's see um Liz said I never thought far enough ahead to think I'd ever be interested in teaching others social media introvert but you've inspired me to want to share this too seriously that <laughs> teaching um knowing that I need to get this message out, you know, whatever that may be, whether it's IV therapy, whether it's elevating post-op recovery, whether it's the hormone chaos that we deal with after a certain age, and we think that it's normal. Some of you may have seen me post normal is not always optimal. Um, we were told this is normal, that is normal, but that does not mean it's optimal or great for our quality of life. I have a message and I'm super excited about it. And it does. That's what makes me, that's what helps me to let my guard down and stop overthinking because every day I'm jotting down notes of things I want to share. The other issue is for me is more time management and being more disciplined about actually sharing it. <laughs> so <laughs> that is still a little bit of takes some work for me. And that's why I hired a social media manager. But again, I really felt like I do better myself. Um, Samantha, how do we figure out what to post frequency and how much to share without giving too much away. You know, y'all see that I teach and I mentor, right? <laughs> and some people thought like, this can't be real. That wasn't going to be a real course because how could I give this much away when I actually sell a course too, right? <laughs> you can't give too much away. Honestly, the more value you provide, the more people are going to want more. You can't like, that was what I used to think too. Like, okay, I have this boot camp, but I want to teach a few things, but I, I don't want to give too much away. You can't give too much away. There's just way too much out there. There's way too much to know. You can't give too much away. So don't think about giving too much away. <laughs> um, what to post. It just comes to me, like when I do consults. So I do consult calls with potential post-op clients, not with IV, but post-op for sure. And sometimes the questions they ask me, or let's say a client comes in my, to my clinic for a drip and they ask me questions or we have different discussions about different aspects of health and wellness. All those things are things that I take note of. So I'm constantly in this mode of what do people want to know and how can I answer? What are the problems, right? What is the problem? And how can I solve it? How can I provide education? How can I help with prevention? So that's how I know what to post. 
and the list grows every day. I have like reels I need to make because it's just what do people want to know? Another way that I do things is my target client is going to be a, definitely a lot of moms in a certain age group, I said, right? Um, or women. So of course, with that said, they hang out on Facebook, especially this age group. There are a lot on Facebook. So mom groups, local groups, groups for your city for, on different topics. I hang out there like a creeper because remember I said, you have to become a stalker. You want to stalk your ideal client. You want to know their objections, what their fears are, what their problems are, what they may be worried about. What are they thinking about when they first wake up in the morning? Yes, you're a stalker. <laughs> but that's how well, just like the Facebook algorithm feeds you things because the Facebook algorithm stalks you <laughs> so it knows what to feed you right stalk your clients know what their problems are know what the solutions are that they're needing and looking for and that's how you know what to post so yeah sometimes i'm doing my market research and so that's my thing social media is not really just fun for me i know some of you inbox me sometimes i'm on there and i'm focused on market research and my target client so i don't even see my dms until like later in the day but that's why so I really don't just go on Facebook for just fun anymore. Um, all social media for me is, is what does my target client need from me and how do I serve them? Are there any Canva? I, you know what I would say for Canva is look on YouTube. YouTube has been around for years, but I feel like recently I kind of have had this research of interest in YouTube, as y'all can tell, because that's where these videos are going. But YouTube, I know that there are some good Canva people um, on YouTube. There's some great content there. Is there a pick video release clause on the intake? It is on my consent. Yes, I do have a um, waiver of liability, but also about recording. If someone says they don't want to be recorded, I definitely respect that and note it though. And I'll even send them a different consent if they, especially for my postdoc clients. Let's see, do you have dates for postdoc beyond February, 2024? Tiffany, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I get that question. I, I do get those questions a lot. Like I'll have, to, okay, this is typically how it goes for boot camp. Typically there's a February, this has been since 2021. There's a February date. Usually there's a June and there's a September. So I do need to outline or um, kind of determine my June and September. Typically, I try to avoid Q4 now. Um, I try to avoid, um, I have one in the summer because some people do want to travel in the summer and then September. So yes, that is, um, I actually did more virtual weekends this year. Um, so there could be more, but I do find that it's a little better to kind of have at least a quarterly. So yeah, there should be a June and there should be a September and Sometimes if there's a lot of demand, I'll throw in another one somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, so nurses, like one thing you have to think about when you're thinking of your marketing foundation is that, again, we are experts in what we do. We have expertise, we have experience, we have knowledge and yes, it is needed. So um, one of the biggest impacts that we can make, think about it, I'm doing this webinar and y'all are here. But my impact is going to be even bigger when I can post that out on YouTube. Y'all can catch the replay one. So that increases my impact. But then other people who have never heard of me can come along and find this information too. And you can do the exact same with your clinic, with your IV therapy. You can have a channel. There's a guy that I pulled up. He does hormone therapy, testosterone. And I was just creeping his TikTok. And his only focus, his whole niche is uh, men's health and education. So he educates on different topics surrounding men's health, testosterone, and that's on TikTok. So he just makes short clips and he also does it on YouTube. So what that does though, when you do TikTok feeds into Google, by the way, SEO, you can Google something. And if there's a TikTok video about it, that will pop up. So using those keywords, even on your TikTok or Instagram can help your social media pages pop up in Google searches too. And that is how a lot of postdocs have found me. They have found my Instagram first. Um, my very first client found me on Instagram via hashtags. So people can be out looking and not find you. And then you start posting. Imagine this, you start posting and providing education and not overthinking it and just saying, I, this is what I need to share. And this is the problem. And this is how I can solve it. And then because of that and the correct use of hashtags or keywords, people find you. That's exactly how marketing can work. Let's see. 
how many nurses work for you for post-op there's like six of us now including me because I do some of them too yeah post-op is um if uh, just in case you didn't catch it I talk about post-op concierge on my YouTube channel um, remember I said a lot of things I was answering questions and kind of repeating so now I just have these videos all in one place and you can just go eventually there'll probably be thousands of them <laughs> and you can just go binge watch them um, so yeah I have a start your post-op concierge video there's also a start your postpartum concierge video on YouTube there's a heart truth surviving therapy video and then like I said these will be added as well so by the time you get to my boot camp you have all this background and now we're focused on okay this is what you need to do to build your business are you post patients using I do. I am able to accept HSA, FSA, and yeah, they can use it for post-op because you can use it for an expense not covered by insurance. So if they're having a surgery and then they need some nursing care. So yeah, they can. I've had a client or two do that, especially for IV therapy. Hopefully I answered that question right. Let me look over on this side. Okay. Can RNs post TikToks and YouTube channels? Oh my goodness. I like this question, but um <laughs> or is it better for mps and above no we all like all of us have expertise and knowledge and experience we're all experts in something okay so we're all passionate about something so no all of us all of us can post or be an expert in what we are an expert in you know that's um once we get past imposter right i know for me one big hurdle in mindset that i had to get over was um, I was like, why well, I should not be teaching post-op recovery boot camp. I've only been in business a year, but my comfort with teaching post-op recovery boot camp when I started teaching it was because I had been taking care of plastic surgery clients for well over 10 years, right? So definitely understand that, yeah, it feels like people are going to judge you or say, who does she think she is or he, or what do they know? But stand in it. Showing up as an expert is another huge part of your marketing foundation. Like take what you are passionate about and what you're knowledgeable about, what you like to binge on. Like I love to learn about hormones. I love to learn about functional medicine. I love to, I love post-op care, right? Take that and, and make yourself like do the work, put in the work to be the expert, stay up on the latest, stay up on the latest research, stay up on what is happening in that niche, in that market. That is all the better for you to show up as an expert and provide the education. And you can do that at any level as far as being a nurse. You don't have to be um, a certain. But yes, imposter syndrome, as Samantha said, is real. It is sickening. It will almost shut you down. Do it anyway. I'm concerned I haven't been a nurse for life. Will people listen and hold my information credible? Yes, <laughs> they will. Because you position yourself as such, you do the work, okay? You can't just show up and say, I am the expert. You do the work, right? I do the work. I research what my clients need. I research in, um, information surrounding IV therapy. I research, for example, I did not do any preparation for this three nights. I took my boot camp slides. That's what you're looking at. I told y'all that. And I just sat down and started talking because I've done the work, right? I, I research, I read, I pay attention to the problems that I see nurses running into. So even if y'all, some of you on here, like she does not know what she's talking about. I'm an expert because I I put in the work, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I, I am an expert on this because I put in the work and the time and the effort, the energy to see the problems and help to solve them and to also provide information and knowledge to other nurses, right? So don't worry that you don't, you put in the work and you do the research and you keep up like me, I keep up with regulations and what's changing, right? Um, being the expert doesn't mean you have to know everything. The part of being an expert is understanding that you have limitations and knowledge just as well as the people you are educating. So if anything, you keep putting in the work to learn more, right? And take that back to serve and impact your target community. So I totally get what you're saying though. So Tiffany asked, how long the typical post-op appointments last? Well, I do my packages in hours. So like when we're doing post-op, we're talking like um, packages. So it goes from four to 24. So I, I definitely say watch my video on YouTube about that. And then 
Yeah, you need to be at boot camp, Tiffany. <laughs> so, and, and see what I mean? Like I can give away tons of information, but there's still so much more. So it is not possible. It's not possible that I could give too much away, but I did have a point. And think of more when, you, when you're when you doing this, th again, you have to change your mindset. That is the biggest part of all of this. Change your mindset to really focus on value and to whoever you're serving and really focus on impact. There's no way you could give too much away. There's just too much out there. There's too much to know. There's too much, you know? Um, no matter how much I give away, that you still need to be, if you're wanting to start, you're still going to need mentorship, whether that's me or someone else, you're still going to need certain other aspects of the business. And I give a lot away. <laughs> Let's see. How do you offer 24 hours? I don't. So when with Ivy, so we, okay, hold on. We're talking Ivy therapy marketing, but for these questions, when as far as offering 24 hour care, um, you can sleep. It depends on the client. So we're talking post-op now, y'all. We're kind of on a little, um, you can possibly sleep, but that's just going to depend on what you determine. You could say to your client, like, hey, I'm going to go rest, but here's how to reach me. Or you could do 7P to 7A and not sleep. Or as you grow and build the team, you could have someone else doing the overnights, which is what I do. Let's see. Let's see if I missed any, any questions. So y'all, so I have... I need to give y'all the link. I have a like a marketing ebook, so to say, and I'm going to link that in tonight's email that I send out. And it talks about low cost ways to market on and offline um, as far as visibility, um, interaction with your community, providing value, providing education. Um, you, so it talks about that. Most of it is kind of free, low cost. And that is a good place to start with marketing your IV therapy or because I did say this would be helpful for concierge too as far as post-op or private care but yes relationships and really being aware the only difference between IV therapy or post-op care or senior care or any niches you're providing is who is your target client what do you need to know about them? What are their problems? What are their pain points? That's another word for problems that is used in marketing. What are their pain points? What are the solutions can offer can be offered to relieve that pain, right? And that's the main difference when you're doing different service lines is knowing those things and then knowing who else influences that client. So for post-op, we know everybody's like, oh, should I go into surgery center? Because surgeons influence that client, right? <laughs> so- yeah, you could give your information out to surgery centers because they have trust with that surgeon. So if they say, hey, reach out to this person, that is automatic trust for you a lot of the time, right? But think beyond that, IV therapy, um, your target clients may go to the gym or your target clients may be having bariatric surgery or your target clients may struggle with Lyme disease or maybe looking more for a functional medicine style um, approach to their care. Um, your target client may be the party scene. It may be the just the recovery from partying. Like I definitely have thought about this for Nashville. You know, everybody comes there, they're tourists, they're visiting, they're partying, their weddings, their their bachelorette parties, bachelor parties. That may be your target client. So they they're traveling, they're in town for a few days. They want to do something that they don't may not typically do at home, and that may be an IV drip. So how would you target them? You would target event planners, for example. You would target wedding planners, for example. You may be out and about um, and hanging out where they're hanging out in touristy areas, right? So it's all a matter of your target client, knowing who that is and knowing who influences them and knowing how to get in front of them and be invisible to them. If your target client is seniors, you're going to want to deal with, um, you may want to be at events that target seniors, whether that's a... Um, like a fall prevention workshop, you should be there, right? Or um, a, a get together that's for seniors at the center in your town, you want to be there <laughs> introducing yourself. So marketing is something else we overthink, but it really is being visible and knowing what your target client's problems are and how you can solve them and getting in front of them and getting that message to them and building that trust. Let's see. So let's see. Also love the story you told about uh, once told some months ago about competition 
and when someone became oh wow Liz you've been following me a while huh <laughs> so she's referring to a story that I talked about um probably a few months ago now about not being afraid. So with marketing and being kind of like, oh, well, so-and-so does this, or there's so many people in my city that do whatever the case may be. So yes, um, social media, having my page, building trust, interacting with other professionals in my niche, by the way, interacting with them, building relationships with them. Um, I never met this lady and she ended up having been, being pregnant. She also provided post-op care, but we, I knew about her business. She knew about mine. Right. And it's funny because I had gone around, I had introduced myself. I had taken care of clients from different surgery centers. And one particular day I got, I started getting calls from multiple clients from a surgery center and they were like, Oh, our facility told us about you. And somehow one of the clients ended up telling me even more tea. And she was like, yeah, well, they, referred me to this person but when I called her she told me to call you and she told me the name and I was like oh my goodness I only know her from Instagram I only like <laughs> never met her in my life and she did again she did the exact same thing as me no issue um she referred she ended up not taking clients any longer and um shut her business down and she told the surgery facilities about me and clients who they were sending to her. And then I felt kind of crazy because I was like, wow, I can't believe I hadn't reached out to that facility. <laughs> but it all it was about two or three that I started getting clients from regularly because she referred them. So don't be afraid of competition. To me, competition, yeah, there's competition. Okay, let's be real. Um, we all may want the same clients, but if the, on the flip side of there, there really isn't because the person who does the exact same thing as you may attract a totally different kind of client than the client you attract or you're looking to attract. So it is perfectly fine that you may be the same in the same vicinity doing the same thing. But yeah, that was, um, that story goes back a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. I'm like, that's something you've been following for a while. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, Tiffany, you got to come to boot camp for sure, for sure. And you really should come. February is virtual. By the way, you don't have to come in person. It's completely virtual. There's just an option of coming in person on day two, which is IV therapy day in February but it's super virtual, like it's completely virtual. And that was just a change. So my target audience used to always wanna come in person, but the economy changed, flights changed, things changed. So I pivoted to offering virtual and then having that option of coming in. So let's see, I answered that. But yeah, media, um, visibility, and um, using social media, blogging, especially if you like, I hate writing, but if you like to write, use, embrace that and use that to write blogs, okay, and post them on your website, education for your clients. Let's see. Do you do individual mentorship? I do. I do individual. We usually do a package of four calls. But what I like to do before I do that, I like to have a consult with you. And let me go back up. And y'all keep posting any marketing questions you have because that's pretty much the extent of marketing. See, that's we're in my boot camp because the next part of the boot camp, we go into nutrients. <laughs> so let's see. So email me here is info at concierge I will send you my link to schedule a call. It's like a 15 minute intro call. And um, so we don't do business strategy or anything like that, but then we'll talk about it. And um, I'll tell you about like the one-on-one. -on -one. I usually try to aim for four calls and we can determine if you need more after that. But I usually give you homework. I record them and I want you to actually be actively implementing. Okay. So yeah, but I do, I do um, offer that option. So Ivy Therapy Bootcamp is this weekend, y'all, the full bootcamp, okay? And also on 11-11. So I do hope to see some of you there. I'll send the email again. Okay, y'all, so I messed up. This is what happened. I sent the email out last night and I took $200 off of Ivy Therapy Bootcamp. So it's usually $7.45 and I made it $5.45, right? So that was gonna end last night at midnight. But when I sent the email out, I made the mistake of saying $200 rather than $200 off. So now I just left it open. So it is still $200 off. Uh, this is the, obviously the webinars are over. So 
that will end, okay? Um, and it'll go back to the regular price. But yeah, thanks to my mistake, I just left it $545, $200 off. And for that amount, you get the course, the full course, but you also get access to the IV Therapy Essentials Digital Toolkit. And I told y'all a bit about that, but it is full of resources, protocols, consents, and most importantly, with the new USP 797 updates, I'm adding protocols and procedures for that too. Um, and that will be after this weekend, but I'll be adding those too, okay? It's post-op recovery bootcamp we've talked about already, but it's in February. There will be dates beyond February, but I really want y'all to come to February and you can do virtual, but if you want a little vacation, you need to thaw out because it's February and it's gonna be cold most places. It might be cold here, but but you can come in on the IV therapy day, okay, in person. I'll just have you RSVP a couple of weeks out so I know who's wanting to come in person. Um, but otherwise, it is still virtual. So it's a little bit of a hybrid event. And then I know I shared the last couple of nights my website. You can go to bit.ly slash bootcamp nurse. All of that has to be lowercase. Or just go to my website, which is... Um, that will take you there as well, but just go to adaptivewellness.com and go to training boot camps. So adaptive is always without an E, okay? But that has a lot of um things. And just in case you weren't here the last three nights, yes, you can purchase the IV therapy resources toolkit separately if you don't need the full class. A few of people have, congrats on that because it is packed and loaded with tons of stuff. So just to, because I didn't show this the other nights, the iron infusion protocol, that's definitely one thing that's in there, but I'll just go quickly. So this is the boot camp. Oh, wait, let's start over. Okay. This is the boot camp course folder. But inside of that, here's IV therapy. So this is the IV therapy resources. When I talk toolkit, this is what I'm talking about. This is all digital, but See, there's the marketing ebook is here. I'm going to share that with y'all tonight though. That's free that you can look through that. But protocols, USP 797, our favorite thing. Um, forms, consents, links for CLIA waiver, pre and post drip education, good faith exam, um, videos where I talk about coaches, um, um, coaching formulas, mixing. There's a pharmacy presentation. Heck, there's even a replay for July in here, <laughs> but the, and that's old, but I consider that outdated, okay? But nonetheless, <laughs> that is what the IV therapy toolkit looks like. So it's all different things in here. Um, this alone right here, formulas. So it's videos of me. So yeah, when I talk IV therapy toolkit and you hear me say that, that's what I'm talking about. So I will send y'all the email Thanking you again and also um, and also give you that ebook and then still the links just in case you want to slide into boot camp this weekend. Um, IV therapy virtual. Let's see. Do you also assist with collaborating? I can. Let me show y'all something real quick, just because y'all are the last people on here. Let me show y'all something because I, the other nights we kind of ran over. Let me show y'all what I, I I can do this for you. I I don't know why, but it, so I can assist you in the way of how I do mine. And that is I post on Indeed. So let me show y'all, y'all, since y'all hung out with me. So I, no, no, that's not what I wanted <laughs> there. So I mentioned how I find my collabs on Indeed. So I was on with a client, a private like mentor and nurse the other day. And I posted this ad right here. See, it says collaborating physician. These are some of my other jobs I've posted for post-op, CNA, massage therapist. Okay, but this one, I posted with her. We did it right together, right? And y'all see, I have 19 resumes waiting. So 147 people clicked on it, but here's the resumes, right? So see how it just says a very short summary um, of what I do and what the time commitment is. and the offered price, right? So, and then I have 19 resumes to look through. And what's really funny about that is some of them aren't in Florida. So I definitely need them to be licensed in Florida, obviously. But it was funny because I had another like private one-on-one -on -one client and I was going through this with her and I was like, oh wait, there's somebody in Ohio. And I just shared the information with her like, hey, reach out. 
you know? So I say that this is not a super complicated process. Y'all see how short and sweet this is, right? This is just super short and sweet. And I put the price and then we talk about that and I actually interview them, right? Now, let me show you something else. So the toolkit has a full bundle for collaboration and getting collab. But right here, let's see, no, no. That ain't the right website, the right way. Okay, so here in this website, right? So the Iron Infusion Protocol is here. Y'all see how some parts of the toolkit are available here separately, but let me show y'all a couple of free things. There's a free business test startup, okay? Some of you probably have this. Um, there's a... There's a post postpartum concierge webinar, but that's on YouTube now. But there is a free, let me find it, let me find it. Oh, medical director collaborative physician template. This is like a way for you to present your business to a collab. It's like a Canva template. It's, it's already made slides. So you could actually, when you post your ad, you can interview them. That's free. Because remember I said, it's not possible to give too much away. <laughs> there's paid things here, but as you see, <laughs> there's that's free. So there's a couple of free downloads here even relating to finding it. Um, and even the bundle that has the contract template is still on sale because I'm about to revamp the store. But nonetheless, <laughs> I wanted to show y'all that really quick. And let me see. I saw a question about postpartum concierge. I... I don't know how many people want that, but I'll go in. It's it's 7.45. I'll go in to postpartum concierge. Let me figure it out and make a discount code, okay? And I'll send that out in the email. So if you are wanting it, I'll send you a discount code, okay? Um, Let's see. So yeah, I definitely can assist. Do we complete course at our own pace? So my on-demand course is yes. For the virtual boot camp, you're getting an experience of being. So let me tell y'all about that. You're showing up, right? You're having this kind of interaction. You can ask your questions. We can have on like real-time interaction. But what happens after is you also get access to the digital version of the course. So just keep in mind that it's a pre-recorded. But the advantage of getting access to the digital version. So say you take IV therapy boot camp, you get access to the pre-recorded. So and what that does is just helps you in the sense that it's divided into modules. So you don't pay extra for that. And keep in mind, this pre-recorded is $4.95 by itself. So um, yeah, anything that you do as far as like, if you go to my digital store and you purchase the on-demand or the postpartum concierge, y'all also see that it lets you divide payments. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, you can do IV therapy bootcamp just a digital essentials um, post-op recovery bundle, which is IV therapy and post-op and postpartum concierge. So I know these courses, it can get confusing. And then I do the virtual event, which is live like this interaction. But you do get access to the replay of the on-demand. Let's see. So I think I answered everything. Oh, wait, I see some new ones. Um, so Jamie, it showed a prime example of SEO. So this, she said, I found you on YouTube when searching concierge nurse, keep up the YouTube videos. There you go. Social proof. <laughs> so Veronica says she's interested in the postpartum. Cool. I'm going to make a code and send that out and y'all will have it. And thanks for attending this webinar. Okay. Do I pay for ads? I've tried that. I didn't find ads to be so successful for what I do. So I really have started focusing more on my education and social media and search engine optimization and visibility. So again, marketing wise, I literally told y'all what I do. And one of the main things I focus on is how can my client find me? It's great to give out my cards. It's great to get referrals, but I need them to also find me. So I do search, I do focus a lot on that. Let's see. I would love to do postpartum. Yeah, postpartum is done in partnership with Nurse TJ. And if you want to kind of get an idea of what Nurse TJ does, the one who teaches postpartum with me, this is her. This is her website. So she is the postpartum expert. 
And when I approached her to teach this class with me, she had already been at this for a few years and she thought she wasn't ready because of imp imposter syndrome. But yeah, she did the postpartum concierge class with me. And some of the parts of the class that I do are similar to this, but then she goes in and does the postpartum part. So this is her website. It's called Mommy2, like T-U, Postpartum and Beyond. So I would say go look at her website too, but she's also the, see, she's hosting galas. This is like her second one. She just had a very successful one. Um, let's see. Yeah. Did she take the packages off her website? She used to have them on here. But now she's been really focused on events and like community education, y'all, to build her business. So that's kind of more so of what she's been doing. And you see, there's a blog on here, but <laughs> yeah, look at all this. So yeah, I would say go visit her website. That's who I did the um, postpartum course with. Shout out to TJ, if she catches this YouTube replay. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching. I'll pause here.